What's going on guys? My name is Jacob Bennett with Bulldog Analytics and today we're going to switch things up a little bit and actually discuss an Excel tipper trick. This is one that I use often and I find very helpful. Consider an instance where you want to use VLOOKUP or INDEX MATCH, maybe HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, they all kind of do similar things, but the issue with them is that they only return one single result. They assume that the results table that you're uh, looking at only has one corresponding match. Now, what if you have multiple results, multiple corresponding matches? You're going to have to switch things up. I've got a tip uh, that we leverage the filter array function. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into an example of how this works, and I hope that this is something that benefits your analysis. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, guys, now as you can see on my screen, I've got my first of two examples pulled up. This file is called employee status. Basically, what I want to do in this first example is I want to return a list of the employees based on the status I define in cell B3. So as you can see, I've got a data validation list here where I can select on leave, retired, or terminated. And then in C3, I'd like to return a list starting in C3 and working its way down based on the corresponding employees that match that status. So the way that I would do this is I would use this filter array function. So I'm going to go ahead and say equal filter. Now, as you can see, the definition it has here is that it filters a range or array. And so we're going to be able to kind of manipulate that to accomplish our results that we desire here. So first it asks for an array. This is basically the cell range where our result will source from. So I want to return uh, employee names. So I'm going to select the employee names here and that is our array. Then basically we need to do an include statement or a true false statement. So basically I want the corresponding status, which I can select like this, to equal whatever the status is set to here in B3. Lastly, if empty, I usually just default to blank. I'm gonna go ahead and close parentheses and click enter. Now obviously I don't have a status set, so there's nothing that's returning. But if I were to drop down my list here and select on leave, you'll see if I click out of there that I've returned a list vertically of all the on leave employees. And if I were to drop that down, retired, terminated, so on and so forth. So this is a really great uh, feature and function, something that uh, is similar to that of VLOOKUP, but it corresponds and works well with multiple values. Now in this example, as you can see, we're returning in a vertical fashion. What if you want to return in a horizontal fashion from left to right uh, alongside a list of values? Well, let's jump over to our example two. All right, as you can see, we've got a list of unique company names. And basically what I have going on here is each company name has a corresponding purchaser. Well, some companies have multiple purchasers. And so I'd like to return everyone associated with that company who is defined as a purchaser. So we're gonna take a similar approach, but before we get there, let's go ahead and use the VLOOKUP function just to kind of walk through uh, the basic logic here. So if we do a basic VLOOKUP function, we wanna define our lookup value, which is the company. We want to define our table array, which I'm gonna jump over to purchase data and I'm just gonna select it like this. So column A and B. And then I wanna return the column index number two, which is purchaser, and we'll go that route. So if I copy this all the way down, this seems to work perfectly fine, but the issue is with VLOOKUP, it only returns the first match and then it basically just ignores uh, all other corresponding matches when there are multiple matches. Now, just as a quick reference point, I'm gonna use a count ifs statement. And I basically just want to determine how many results for each uh, company exist over on the purchaser data tab. So my cr criteria range is gonna be the company column. And then my criteria is gonna be column A over here. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter, copy that down. Now, just by eyeballing it, you can see that everything's one except for these two, and they actually have two results. So my expectation would be that I want both purchasers from both of these companies to return in my lookup. What we can assume is that this VLOOKUP for Shufflister, I think is how you'd pronounce it, Abby Alloway, is not the only purchaser at that company. And in fact, if I click over to purchaser data, you look at Shufflister. We've got Abby Alloway and Kipper Northing. So I'd like for both to return in my lookup and let's see how we can do this. So if I come back over here and I just kind of follow the same uh, process as our example one, I want to select our purchaser array, which is what I want to return as a result. And then we're going to select uh, company and set that equal to our line uh, context on the first tab. I'll go ahead and do comma and do the double 
quotes for blank result if empty, close. Now let's go ahead and copy that down. Now you'll see everything works just fine except we've got these two spill errors right here. And what that basically indicates is it's attempting to return a vertical list, but it's spilling over into another list or another result. And so it's unable to return a value. So if I were to actually delete out all of these, and then I'm just going to go ahead and clear all the uh, highlighting, you'll see that that Abby Alloway and Kipper Northing are returning for Shufflister. This is not the Skinty result, Kipper Northing. This is the Shufflister Kipper Northing. So when I copy this down again, it's going to return that spill error. So basically what I want to do is instead of returning it in a vertical manner, I want to push it out to the right so that it returns in separate columns. So essentially all I would need to do is take this filter function and wrap it in a transpose function. If I click enter, accept, copy that down, you will now see that the instances that have a count of two now have two results side by side in two different columns. This is an awesome function to keep in your back pocket and just a quick tip or trick to use in some ad hoc analysis. I hope you find this uh, example beneficial and I will talk to you next time. Thanks guys.